Welcome to the next installation in the series on number theory and computations. And in this one, it will be a direct continuation of the last video where we talked about the properties of operations. So essentially, we'll be looking at a few additional properties um, of operations or on operations, I should say. The first one we'll look at is closure. We say a set has closure under an operation when every two numbers of the set combine to give a number of the same set. For example, let's take elements that are members of the set of integers. And let's say we're looking at 3 plus 5. 3 is an element in the set of integers. And 5 is also an element in the set of integers. 3 plus 5 is 8. And 8 is also an element in the set of integers. And so we say that there is closure under addition for the set of integers. Next example. We have a set of even numbers and we're multiplying 4 by 8. Well, 4 is an element in the set of even numbers. And 8 is also an even number. 4 multiplied by 8 equals 32. And 32 is an even number. So we see that there is closure for multiplication in the set of even numbers. Third example, the set of odd numbers. And let's say we're dealing with the operation 3 plus 5. 3 is an element in the set of odd numbers. And so is 5. However, we see that 3 plus 5 is equal to 8, and 8 is not an element in the set of odd numbers. And so we say that there is no closure for addition in the set of odd numbers. The second property we'll be looking at for this video is identity, or it's called identity. So an identity is a number that doesn't change the value of another number when undergoing an operation. For example, let's consider the number 5. We need a number that when added to 5 doesn't change its value. So we'd receive 5 when we add it to 5. Well, we know that 5 plus 0 is equal to 5, right? So this would mean that 0 is the identity for addition since it doesn't change the value of the number 5 when we add the numbers. Similarly, if we have, let's say, the number 7, 7 minus 0 is 7, which means that 0 is identity for subtraction, let's say, since it doesn't change the value of the number when we subtract um, 0 from it. So the general rule is if we have a number A, which might represent any number, then A plus 0 is equal to A always. And a minus 0 is also a. 0 is what we'd refer to as the identity for addition and subtraction, let's say. Likewise, for multiplication and division, if we have the number 5, we need a number that when multiplied by 5 doesn't change its value. So we'd receive 5 in the end. And we know that 5 multiplied by 1 is equal to 5 which means that 1 is the identity, the identity for multiplying or multiplication. Similarly, 10 divided by 1 is equal to 10. And so 1, we can call it the identity for or the identifying number for division. So if we have a number, any number, let's call it B, then B multiplied by 1 is equal to B always. And B divided by 1 is equal to B. This means that 1 is the identity for a multiplication. And we call 1 the multiplicative identity. So that's just a random property I was just throwing out there. It's kind of um, easy to get, especially once you know like the different operations, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. There's just a special name for them. So the third thing we look at for this video are, is inverses. An inverse is a number that when combined with another number gives the identity. So we just showed that the, ad the additive identity is 0 and the multiplicative identity is 1. 
So an additive inverse in this case is a number that when added with another number would give zero, which is the, addi the additive identity. If, for example, we have the number five, then five plus some number should be equal to zero. That number is negative five, since this would be equal to zero, right? Five minus five is equal to zero. We already did um, perform the performing of operations on different signs. Just go back to that video. Likewise, if we had six, six minus six is zero, and negative eight plus eight would be equal to zero. This means that an inverse for addition and or subtraction, let's say, would just be a change of sign. We see that for plus five, its inverse is negative five because when we combine the two, we get zero. And for a negative eight, its inverse is positive eight. So the inverse for three is negative three and the inverse for a negative six is positive six because whenever we add both of these numbers together, we get zero. The next thing we look at is a multiplicative inverse. And this right now might be a little bit of a weird concept to grasp for you if you haven't been through fractions and the operations on fractions, which we'll do in the next video, by the way. So feel free to just skip this last part. But if you want to know more about the multiplicative inverse, then continue watching the last minute and a half of this video. Anyways, a multiplicative inverse is a number that when multiplied with another number gives the multiplicative identity, which is one, right? So if we have a number five, we need to find a number that when multiplied with five gives one. And just to cut things short, the answer is one over five. Similarly, if we have 10, then the number multiplied by 10 that gives one is one over 10. So the multiplicative inverse we achieve by writing the number, any number, let's say A, as 1 over A. And so 1 over A is what we call the inverse of A. And another name for these numbers, the 1 over A or the 1 over 5 or the 1 over 10, is the reciprocal. And as I said, in the next video, we'll be looking at these things a lot more because we'll be talking about fractions. So it should be a lot more clear in the in future videos. And that's it for this video. So I wanted to keep it short and sweet because the next video I think will be a lot more fun. We'll be looking at fractions. And in the meantime, feel free to rewatch some of our previous videos to kind of get the content marinating really well in your brains. And remember to email us if you have any question. Our website is in the description below. Like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one where we'll be discussing fractions.